Hey everybody, Arnold Wofferman here with Master School Dances. And today I want to talk to you about the Inner Pocket Spot Twins. Now I've had these guys for quite some time and I've been using them for my wedding, smaller event. I actually like these so much that I wound up buying six of them. I lost track for a second. I bought six of them for our wedding rigs. But then as I use these for other types of events, I realized that despite the 12 watt LED rating, which at first I'm like, okay, it's not as bright as my Inner Spot Pros or the Elite, but despite that rating, these things actually work well for school dances. You're going to see some video footage of that in just a second. So let's take a look at some of the features of the Inner Pocket Twins, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what's included, how you can use it at events, and we're going to talk about the 12 watt rating as well. So first of all, right out of the box, you get a few different ways to hang this. Now you can basically clamp it on the back. There's a little bolt back here where you can just tighten it and it locks right in, which is really nice because that way I can have, for example, a T-bar system here, or if I wanted to do something really cool, I could do an array. Maybe I could do three on a tall pole on each side of the stage and basically three of them on each side. That's giving you 12 moving heads at a ridiculous price. Uh, I could actually, there's little mounts over here, right? I can just sit there, I can screw them in, and I can also hang this from trussing as well. So the same system that I set up quickly on a T-par is now working on trussing or being able to hung from truss, so it gives me a lot more different effects on there. Just like the traditional Inno Pocket Spot, they still have their separate color and gobo wheels. Now the gobos are fixed, which means you can't replace the gobos, but they're really nice gobos. They're not like, you know, just your normal cheesy stuff. They've put some patterns that look really good without, without haze, and then they've chosen some gobos that look great when you're using a lot of haze. You've got 12 really bright, really vivid colors that all come from a 12 watt LED source. Now that's not 12 watts together, that's on each side. If you're familiar with the NO Pocket Spots, this is basically two of them in one simple to use package. Now you'll see that I'm actually hanging these using the, or I have these suspended on one of the DOTS T-PAR tripods. However, this was made to fit on a one and a half inch stand, which is your traditional speaker stand, so you can put them right underneath your speakers for a really clean look. So because the stand for the T-PAR is a little bit too small, it doesn't grip it right away. So I literally just, one to Lowe's and I got a piece of metal, I bent it in half and then I just slide it in and it locks in, great. Which, you know, it's kind of disappointing that it didn't reach all the way there, but if they made it so it reaches this, then it's not gonna hit a traditional speaker stand. And I know a lot of DJs wanted to fit, fit something underneath their speakers, which is great when you're right up on a stage. One of the cool things is that when I first started using this, one of the first events was for a Sweet 16. And that's when I realized, oh, I can't hang this from here without a spacer or something in between. So I put it underneath the speakers and I thought, oh, this is gonna look, you know, stupid. It's just gonna be hitting people the entire time. But I went ahead and tried it. You know, desperate times comes for desperate measures. So before we went back over to the office to pick it up, we went ahead and set it up and it looked great. And because the floor had like a really nice shiny white surface to it, the lights actually bounced off there and you know, went everywhere. So it looked like it had twice as many moving heads as I had. But it's cool because it went right underneath each speaker. So that means I basically had four moving heads that I just set on master and slave mode and I was able to quickly control it. Instead of using DMX, because I right now we're building a portable light control system using my DMX. But for this one, instead of using my DMX, I just got the little remote control that you can get for it, and I can control the lights, the speed, color, all from a little remote control, and they immediately went into master and slave. Now, if you're not familiar with the way the ADJ does their master and slave, you have SL1 and SL2. Slave 2 does not mean that they're inverse the entire time. Some of the programs, they'll all do the same, some of them are phase, some of them are inverse. Basically, SL2 means we've got an entire great show program, or, you know, great show program for you, some great sequences. Some of them will all be the same, some of them are inverted, some of them are mirrored. There's a whole bunch of different things. So SL2 gives you really nice flexibility. If you have, let's say, four of these, you can do two in SL1, two on SL2, alternating. You just get some really, really, really pretty patterns. On the back, of course, we have a cooling fan. We've got DMX in and out, super simple. We've got the little uh, wing nut to tighten it. This screw that is sticking out is actually one that I just used just to keep that co from coming through because I don't have the spacer on there. And then of course you've got a, uh, eye an eye bolt for your safety wire and you also have power linking. So it is nice to see that in the Inner Pocket Spot Twins they did not skimp out on the power linking. Now this is great because the way that I've used these, my uh, tops don't pull a lot of power so I can literally go out from into here and then out from here into my tops 
or I can go out from here and then on top of my speaker I may have a floodlight you know bolted directly on top and then I come right back down to the actual speaker. So one IAC handles my two lights and my speaker all within the same circuit. So it's really nice that I can set up a nice show with moving heads and tell the hotel I only need one 20 amp circuit. Now one of the things that you may have noticed already is that these are moving, you know, I mean I have them on a decently uh, slow speed. They can go slower than that, but they have an incredible pan and tilt control. Now these have what we call 16-bit pan and tilt. So if you're not familiar with 16-bit pan and tilt, uh, you know that most moving heads, you can go from left to right or up and down, whatever you need. And let's say I was trying to pin spot a very specific area. I can literally go right here and have some really good adjustment. But if I wanted to have precise control, let's go ahead and have it right there. Oops, that's the wrong head. Here we go. If I wanted to have precise control, I can literally go into the fine bit and it's so minuscule you can barely see it. So what this means is that with the Inno Pocket Spot Twins and DMX software such as my DMX Buddy, you could actually do some real cool pin spot effects using these uh, or where you can highlight tables or do spotlight dance and you're going to be able to get it with pinpoint accuracy, no pun intended, because of the 16-bit pan and tilt. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the colors that you can get with this guy. And they're really nice and vibrant. I actually had to step down my aperture quite a bit so you can see the richness of the colors. I'm especially a big fan that they included not just a regular nice royal blue, but a lighter baby blue as well. The hot pink is awesome. And even though I'm projecting on a brown surface, it's not killing the color at all. Again, it is insanely bright. And of course, you've got your split colors too. The gobos are really nice. And like I said, the gobos are one of my favorite things is that they not include corny gobos. So of course, you got your split wheels, you know, as I just call it. It's a split circle, which looks great with haze. You've got two different kinds of star effects. This is really cool. If you got a whole bunch of them on the floor and you have them different, changing different colors and stuff, it looks really nice. Got like the little cool bubble effects. This one also looks really nice on a wall too. And again, despite it being a 12 watt LED, I'm gonna cover that in just a second. I, I've thrown these about 100 foot and you still get a nice bright color out of them. And then of course you've got Gobo Shake. So one of the great things about the NO Pocket Spot series is that they are really well built and ADJ kept things simple to be able to put a lot of power into an easy to use moving head. One of the things that again that we, uh, you notice right away is again you have the separate color and gobo wheels and the gobos as I said they are fixed. They don't rotate, they cannot be replaced. Could you switch out the gobo wheels and make your own? Oh I'm sure but uh, really, if it's just one of those things. To me, my clients are not going to notice the gobos that I use. At that point, I think it's more for other DJs than it is for my clients. You have the really small micro motors here, obviously in the front and the back. You've got your LED driver and your heat sink in the back there. And one of the reasons that I'm glad that they did that is because it keeps this super lightweight. Now, I'm not worried about this thing weighing a lot. That's not my concern. But lightweight means this thing is going to move as fast as you would expect a scanner to move. This is gonna be faster than your traditional moving head. The small size is perfect for that. Now the Inno Pocket Spot Twins are more than just a tool for the mobile DJ. The incredible speed that you get out of these because of their small size and the precision control that you get thanks to the 16-bit pan and tilt. And you'll see actually how slowly they move even on standalone. Means that a nightclub could use these for example so they could highlight the DJ or dancers. If you are in a club or an environment that has low ceilings then these are perfect for you. If you are at a skating rink and you just want tons of great sharp looking beams of light especially if you have haze because there are some skating rinks out there that run haze yeah buddy uh, these are perfect because this is going to give you a really cool high-end club effect 
but you're not spending thousands of dollars and only winding up with two or three individual moving heads. This is something that we as mobile DJs can also sell it as well. It's like, hey, look, with DMX programming, now I can take a very simple set of moving headlights and we can upgrade where instead of the client using a plug and play remote show, now my client can have a DMX program show where I can follow people around or I can do special spotlight dances. Or if that's not in their budget, we just use the remote controller, plug and play, and call it a day. Again, if you use this with a T-PAR system, your T-PAR has two relays to turn lights on and off. So I can just turn these on and off with the T-PAR, and that's it. Super easy. And again, despite their small size, you do get a nice spot effect, thanks to its 13 degree beam. But let's go ahead and talk about that 12 watt LED rating. So some of you have written me and asked me, hey, you know, how, would you use this at a school dance? Would you use this at a wedding? Would you use this at a gym, or this gym, et cetera? And the answer really is, it all depends. Now for the school dances that we do, we always use at least the InnoSpot LEDs, InnoSpot, uh, uh, or the InnoSpot Pros, the InnoColor Beams, the InnoColor Beam LEDs, just because those are the bigger moving heads that we like for those sorts of effects. However, I have used these in gyms before and they are bright. Are they as bright as an 80 watt InnoSpot Pro or the 180 watt InnoSpot Elite? No, but again, it all depends on what you are trying to accomplish. Now let's go and look at that 12 watt LED rating a little bit closer. As I said, we gotta look at more than just the source, which is that LED, and you gotta look at more than just the output. You also have to look at the surface area. So let's go ahead and use, let's use a 50 watt, uh, the InnoSpot LED, the original that started the whole series, right? And let's say that, you know, the gobo is about this size. See, that's really scientific here. It's about this size for the gobo, okay? And the light goes through it, then of course the lenses focus it, and then it goes, great. But what if we made the surface area of that gobo bigger? What if all of a sudden we take that same watt, uh, the 50 watt LED, and make the inner spot much bigger, right? And now suddenly that 50 watt LED has to do an A size gobo, which is about this big, right? Surface area is probably about that, give or take, or even M size, which is what you would see in the icon. What you're going to notice is that it's not going to be as bright than the smaller gobo, even if the pattern is exactly the same. And the reason for that is surface area. Now, let's go ahead and compare that to another real life scenario. I had an event where I had the Icon and I had the, uh, I had a Leco Source 4. I did them side by side and the Icon was visibly brighter. You know, if you look at it with your bare eyes, again, and I'm not using measuring tools because all I care about is what my clients see. When my clients saw it, they saw that the Icon was brighter. They were the same distance away. It was a brand new bulb in the uh, Source 4. But why was the icon brighter? Because the icon had a smaller surface area than the uh, Source 4. Source 4 was a size A, icon was the M size gobo. So again, that surface area really matters. Well, that's how it translates to this. This is a much smaller surface area. I mean, I don't even know what size the gobos are on this thing, but you saw the wheel, it's itty bitty, it's tiny. So that LED light doesn't have to worry about hitting this much surface area, or even this much, or even this much. It's like hitting this much. So that lens is going to take that itty bitty gobo and of course amplify that light out. But because the surface area was smaller, it's gonna look visibly brighter and it's gonna have a better throw than if it was using a bigger gobo. And that's one of the reasons why ADJ, aside from the size, chose not to do replaceable gobos, or at least this is what I'm assuming. Because if you do replaceable gobos, you gotta do bigger gobos. Bigger gobos means bigger surface area and it would not be as bright. So yes, I don't, I, I don't mind keeping static gobos that I can trade or spin or whatever to be able to have a much brighter output. And I have used it for school dances, I've used it in cafeterias, and it's great. Is it as great as the InnoSpot Pros? No, but look at the price of this versus the price of, let's say, an InnoSpot Pro. And that's why I'm saying, if I were to start my school dance business, if I had to start all over again, and I needed money for a small, affordable light show, I would start with these guys right here. And then as more money comes in, then I scale up to the bigger guys. But it's really nice that if I have a school, maybe a private school of 150 students, 200 students, or maybe I have one of the smaller Sadie Hawkins or Winter Formals where they don't have 1,100 students, 500 students, even 400 students showing up, they have maybe 100 or 200 students showing up, that I can set up a couple of these and I'm gonna have just as an effective show in the cafeteria or in that part of the gym. Absolutely amazing, fantastic fixture for the money. There's nothing out there quite like it. Uh, there's lots of different choices in micro moving heads, but again, the 16-bit pan and tilt, the insane brightness that you get out of this LED, the fast, quick, 
easy or you know really smooth response that you get out of the moving head all from a company that if you know five years from now when it's out of warranty my led dies out you saw what this looks like opened up i can just remove the led module call the guys over at service get another led sent out to me right away so even after warranty i have the confidence that i can get these replaced out or you know i'll get the service that i need for them so again my name is arnaldo Waffman with master school dances Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, straight up your Pokemon. I don't care. Just do something cool with these videos. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach me or reach out to me. Let me know what your questions are. And I'll be more than happy to answer or pretend that I know the answer. Thank you guys so much. Good night and God bless.